So we've got all these systems set up. We've created cold aisles and warm aisles. But is it really cooling? Is it really having the effect we want on the temperature? To know, we're going to have to monitor this temperature over a period of time. We want to make sure that what we are cooling is working. We want to make sure that if we raise the temperature a bit to save money, that we're not doing this at the cost of the temperature of the systems in our environment. You may not need certain cooling systems. You may be able to turn off different cooling systems, but you'll never know unless you actually monitor these things over time. So we will want to get a thermometer that can track things over time, maybe provide us with humidity information over time. When night comes, you may have a different pattern than when it is daytime and very hot outside. You may find that different parts of the month are different depending on the number of systems and how much you're working them. Higher CPU utilizations will cause more, more heat in your environment. So we want to log this. We want to look at it. And we want to look at those logs afterwards and evaluate How's our cooling system going? Do we have the proper amount of humidity? Is it working the way we would expect? And we want to watch and make sure there are no spikes. We want to make sure there's no outages. If our system is one where our cooling system fails, you're going to see your temperature rise. So you want your cooling monitoring system to also have alarming and alerting capabilities to let you know that if you're walking down the street one night and your phone has a message pops up on it that says, we just lost a cooling system. The temperature has now risen to a certain amount so that then we can do something about it. We can resolve the issue. We can turn on additional cooling systems or do whatever we need to do to make sure that we have business continuity, to make sure our systems continue to run. One of the challenges when you get a lot of computers together is they put out a lot of electromagnetic interference. If you've ever had a radio or a telephone near a computer, you may notice that there is some interference coming from the computer. And it comes from the heat sinks and the circuit boards and the cables and the interfaces that are directly on the computer. You'll find that if you open up a computer, there's a lot of metal shielding. It may be on the case itself. It may be wrapped around different components of the computer. And that's to prevent a lot of this electromagnetic interference. You don't want to remove those because those are preventing those signals from getting into other things that you might have in your environment. If you ever look at video or you ever listen to audio that comes right out of a computer over an analog set of headphones, for instance, you'll hear the noise. And it may show up in your phone systems. It may show up on your on-hold systems. And a lot of that interference is something you have to keep in mind and keep your computers that are putting a lot of this electromagnetic interference, keep them away from those audio systems. You may also want to monitor your environment with video. You may want to put in your own closed circuit television. This is a television or video system that is in-house that is capturing data from your own cameras and sending it back to one central facility. You can protect your assets this way. Make sure people aren't taking things in and out of the building. You can have cameras on the inside or the outside of your organization. They could be not only protecting your assets, but maybe protecting people that are in your parking lot. You have to think about how much of an area you want to monitor. There's many different kinds of cameras, and they have a different field of view. Some have a very large field of view, a very small field of view. And it will also have an impact on what you're able to see in different lighting as well. You may have to think about getting special cameras because they're monitoring an area that most of the time has very little light, or maybe it's outside and you have times when you want to monitor things during the nighttime areas. These security systems also need to work together. So if there is an alerting system on a door, you may want to make sure that your video system is able to move over to that door and see what's going on should a problem occur. So very often, your security systems all work together. Your video works along with your other intrusion systems to make sure you're able to capture that information.